No, dude, it's not a problem at all. Like, no, you're fine, you're fine. Um, just, just, uh, remember? It's, yeah, 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 you got it, you got it. Uh, just call me if you need anything else, okay? Okay. Alright, fine. Oh my god, it took forever. Oh, I still need the duel. Um, I actually- Who was that guy already? You what? Yeah! Um, I was actually looking for my Thousand Eyes deck, and the guy on your computer asked if I wanted to duel, so I duelled him! Eugene, that was Farfa! Yeah, yeah! Farfa is another Yugi tuber Mm-hmm. A pretty well-known Yugi tuber Eugene, that was for the Yugi tuber Grand Championship. What? Oh. <laughs> Alright, you guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the supposedly upcoming TCG ban list, which could turn our game upside down. Or it could not do anything at all. I mean, that's just how every ban list is. But I've seen videos of people speculating about this upcoming ban list, and of course, I've seen you guys' comments and messages and stuff, and you guys keep asking me, what do I think is going to happen? And honestly, guys, I have no idea with absolute certainty, but I'm going to be uh, doing a discussion today, and we're going to be drilling down and trying to predict what is going to happen on this next ban list. We're going to be discussing the ban list structure and everything itself, and we're going to be talking about some cards that I want off the ban list personally and stuff, because no ban list is discussion would be complete without some uh, selfishness, I guess. But before we get into the video discussion and open up some fan mail, I have a very special shout out to the resource judge that I mentioned in yesterday's video. I'm not going to show um, anything about him in today's video though, um, and the reason why is because he was, you know, he did message me. That was a legit message, and he was a really good sport, and he is a really cool judge and stuff, and so I thought that that was a really cool thing to do in a video, but what I didn't realize is that you guys were going to blow him up and keep him from doing his job, okay? He is a cool guy, he does have a sense of humor, but please guys, please, the judge that I mentioned yesterday, um, you know, for his sake, and if you guys are going to do it for him, do it for me, okay? So he can do his job, please leave him alone so we can continue judging and doing what he does on Dueling Book. And the other shout out, of course, is to all my wonderful patrons, thank you guys all so much for your love and support, and I'm going to be doing the meta match shout out right now in front of the card wall, and then we're going to be talking about this new ban list, and then we're going to be opening up some fan mail. Lots of stuff going on today, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. And the reason why I needed to shout out meta mats in front of the card wall instead of in front of the green screen is because uh, the green screen messes with this thing that I'm going to be giving away to you guys. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be giving away um, the first ever, this is the first print ever um, Cyber Dragon Special Edition mat that you guys saw me announce a couple weeks ago and stuff. Um, this is the original one. This is the test print that he sent me that I showed you guys. And if you guys want a chance to win this mat, all you have to do is like this video, leave a comment down below, and then go comment on my uh, post about this video on my Twitter. That is all you have to do. I used to do Facebook, but now I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitter and Facebook but boys, I am everywhere. I am everywhere. But the reason why um, I'm giving away this mat is because MetaMat sent Ooh. me. Finally, I got my version of the Daddy's Robe mat. I got mine after you guys got to buy yours. But uh, this is, this is, guys, amazing. This is the back. This is the Daddy's Robe back in comparison to the uh, regular MetaMat's back. Uh, this is like, the, that's just the difference. Uh, this uh, backing uh, grips tables and stuff better. And actually, um, th the last 10 mats sold so quick that uh, Meta Mats decided to make four more. <laughs> seriously, guys, seriously. Uh, David con uh, contacted me. He sent me this mat the other day, and he contacted me. He goes, hey, uh, we're going to be making four more in a couple days. I'm going to tell you when you can announce it, when I have the material and all that stuff, and we can do four more mats. And I was like, that is freaking sweet, dude, because honestly, guys, and this isn't just, like, promotional or anything. Like, I mean, it is. I mean, obviously. But the artist guys did a really fantastic job on this. And then, of course, you know, Meta Mats, David, guys, oh, my gosh. They just do an amazing job making mats. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, there's going to be four more of these for sale, these limited edition uh, Daddy's Robe backs, but if you guys, uh, those are going to be a little extra, That you know, these ones are going to be a little extra with the black backing, uh, but if you guys want to, um, you know, get uh, one of these, you could order one of these too. This design isn't limited at all, guys, and uh, good luck to everybody entering in to uh, win this mat, because this mat is freaking amazing. I swear, the more color and stuff, and like, just everything, the further they go along, guys, the better mats they make. I, I don't know how they do it. Like, in, in comparison to when we first hooked up and started doing business together, guys, they have progressed so much. They seriously do make the best mats on the planet. So uh, good luck to, once again to uh, everybody who enters in to win this mat. I can't wait to give it away to one of you guys because these mats are freaking sweet. These are my favorite mats in the world right now. Like seriously, and they probably will be my favorite mats in, in the world until me and MetaMats decide to do something else really cool together. But until then, let's get into the actual discussion here. Let's talk about this ban list, okay? Starting off with it said that it's not going to come out. The ban list is going to come out no sooner than April. And what that means and why Konami started implementing that is because they, they moved away a long time ago. You, this is all stuff you guys, you know, 
a lot of you guys already know, but I'm going to have to explain it anyways for like younger players and stuff. But a long time ago, we used to have set ban list change dates. In other words, they'd be like, okay, uh, your, your list right now is in July or whatever, and then the next one comes out. I think the next one was like October. They would be like, okay, this is your July 14th ban list, and the next ban list comes out October 20th. And they had actual set dates for the ban list. And they moved away from that. The reason why they moved away from that is because if something like a card or a deck becomes a problem, like a huge problem, before that date comes to pass, um, it gives Konami the ability to change that without issuing an emergency ban list, even though we still call them emergency ban lists, because in reality, they still are, in my opinion. I mean, if you're having to change your format sooner than expected and have to make an emergency change, you can see how people still call your list, your altered list, emergency list. Like, to me, that's just, it's the same thing. But this upcoming ban list in particular is very, it's very weird to predict. It's very, very weird to predict. And that, uh, the reason why it's weird to predict is because we are currently in one of the most diverse formats in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And some of you guys may disagree with that because True Draco and Pendulums are definitely the front runners, being the two defined best decks. But every other deck is so close in comparison and can combo and can do, I mean, just they, other decks have high ceilings as well is what I'm getting at here without getting into too much detail because this is just a discussion. What I'm getting at here is that all other decks are very, very viable. Very, very viable. So much so, so, much so that we have a lot of different decks that we can choose from, seriously. If you look, the past couple of months, we have had more diversity in our YCS tops, regional tops, and everything than we've had in a long time. I mean, especially if you think about this time last year, guys, this was just, this was just zoo format. Like, we were in tier zero zoo format this time last year. Everyone and their dog was playing zoo. I saw dogs, actual literal canines playing zoo, okay? So in comparison, this format is great and that is more inviting to players and stuff because instead of being like, oh, hey, if you want to win, you have to play this deck or maybe this deck and possibly this deck it's like hey if you want to win you can you should play one of these two but you can also play anything else you can see the difference here it, it invites a lot more this format has invited i should say a lot more uh, players into the game i'm pretty sure it was ycs bochum i want to say it was the second biggest it happened recently just a couple months ago or a month ago or whatever and it was the second biggest ycs in history so i mean this this format like the past couple months have been very inviting to players the new players and it keeps old players in the game because they actually have a choice in what they play so very very good very very good but the problem here is trying to form a ban list out of that I mean you can go after a uh, true Draco and pendulum because they are you know like I said a minute ago the defined best decks of the current meta but um, how do you go about attacking them and I've seen uh, several different opinions on how to go about hitting those decks uh, most of which have been uh, saying to hit a pendulum some uh, astrograph and stuff and I can see that I could see astrograph or something going to one but the deck I do agree that the deck needs to be hit but the deck I mean even though it does have the highest ceiling is it is also a very skillful deck in comparison to true draco i'm not saying the true draco you know players have no skill i'm not saying that at all because there's plenty of true draco players out there that are way better at Yu-Gi-Oh than i am you know what i mean um what i'm saying though is in and by comparison a uh, true draco is a more linear deck you know what i mean it ha doesn't have as many you know crazy combos it pulls off and you know and all that stuff it just it just doesn't have that uh, but uh, people have been complaining about true draco when it comes to card of demise that's the biggest complaint that i've seen is card of demise because card Demise and anti meta and slow decks, or just decks that play a lot of back row in general. Um that card gets you a lot of advantage and can net you a lot of advantage for, for no reason. And that card ha is a generic card that has been out for a while, and I think that's why a card of Demise is under attack. But um, in, in defense of card of Demise right here, um, you can't have crazy good decks like Pendulum, for example, and not have some kind of anti-meta counter to them. Um, this is very similar to the arguments I used a long time ago when people were calling Kaiju, you know, for Kaijus to be banned. And I was like, no, 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 no. You can't have stupid crap like like masterpiece and everything else, you know, at the time, I can't remember when Kaijus came out, it was like after Breakers, yeah, it was after Breakers of Shadow and all that stuff, but, and this was like Pepe format, and you know, we had Infinity and, uh, you know, stupid boards, right, and I was like, you can't have these stupid, insane boards and not have, um, you know, the, the, the player going second have a way to get around them, you can't, you can't have that, it, does, it doesn't work that way, you know what I mean, uh, so likewise, a card of demise, you can't have these super meta fast decks and um, expect everyone to want to learn and spend all the time learning 
and playing those decks. You're, you're going to have a lot of players that want to play so, slower decks or maybe like play uh, they like to play more control decks. I like to play more control decks a lot of the time so I can relate. So since there's a lot of players that like to play anti-meta and a plethora of anti-meta decks at that because now, I mean, not just True Draco, you know, plays Carter Demise. There's there's a Carter, there's a, a Cl there's Clean Demise. There's there's Cosmo Demise. There's a lot of different Demise decks out there. So for, for um, you know, uh, that card, for that one card and for all anti-meta style players or just, you know, stun style players to suffer, you know, for True Draco's problems, I don't think that's fair. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that everyone should suffer for the sins of one deck. I just, I just don't think that that's fair. And a matter of fact, I, tr I truly think, guys, that, that Carter Demise is not the problem. I know that it, that it nets advantage and stuff, but really, like, you, you ha it's, guys, guys, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you have all these crazy, stupid, fast decks or just, you know, uh, combolicious decks and stuff, you're going to have, you know, all these decks on the other side of it that are going to be able to stop them and are going to want to stop them. It's just, it's just that simple. I honestly feel like, guys, Masterpiece or something about True Draco does need to be hit, though. Like, something about that deck does need to be hit, but what I'm getting at here, guys, um, and that's, this is going to be like, I guess the main, um, the main focus point of this video now, and I'm kind of just building to my point here. Our formats in the past couple of months of Yu-Gi-Oh! have been super, super diverse. So diverse that it's, it's questionable as to even if a ban list needs to happen, sure, certain cards could be hits and stuff like that, and everyone has their own personal ones, I know I have mine, but for the most part, this format is balanced. I think that True Draco should be hit a little more than Pendulum, that is just my opinion. I think Pendulum is a very skillful deck, but a very easily floodgated deck. So uh, since they're easily floodgated and they can kind of auto lose to certain cards like anti-spell fragrance stuff, so there's like, you know, that factor. Uh, since there's that kind of stuff going on, I feel like Pendulums should be hit a little less than True Draco. But whatever hits Konami does to those two decks or just anything that goes on on the ban list in general um, needs to, um, and I think they, they're already on this, because the Lair of Dark Destruction deck comes out tomorrow, so I think they're already on it. But what I was going to say here is that they need to wait and, uh, until that structure deck comes out and see, um, you know, what kind of impact that has on our metagame before making any rash decisions on the ban list. And they, they've kind of already done that. It seems like they, they were already on, on top of that. So that's really, really good. Uh, so for other things that should be hit, you know, miscellaneous things that should be hits, um, I, I really call for Masterpiece to go to one or something like that, but that's that just my opinion. Um, I think there, there's, uh, I don't think, you know, Electromite should be hit, you know, for Pendulums or anything like that. In my opinion, guys, uh, you know, as far as Joker and all that stuff, I think that it, those cards should stay banned and and then they should be, um, you know, just leaving pendulums alone for the most part. Astrograph or something like that could get hit to one, uh, but for the most part, they should just leave that deck alone. But really what I'm getting here, though, is because of how much variety that we have, um, if we do get a ban list before Nats, if they do come out with one, this supposed ban list that we're waiting on, you know I mean? No sooner than April, no sooner than April, right? Um, the, you know, if they do come out with this list, um, I don't think that it needs to have a whole lot on it. And I, I know that's anticlimactic. I know, I know, you guys are going to be like, no, I want to I want to hear all the stuff you want banned. No, I don't think anything should be banned. I think that we should see what happens, and then Konami's emergency list system that I brought up, you know, at the beginning of the video can take effect if, you know, you know this Lair of Darkness deck becomes a problem, which I don't think it's going to be. I, I mean, the deck's going to be good, don't get me wrong. It's going to be plenty good, but I'm saying, is, is it going to be like, you know, tier zero broken? I, I just I just don't think so. I don't think that it's going to be that strong on its own, even, the ha even in the hands of a really, really good player to just, you know, completely dominate every other deck. I just, I just don't think that it's that great of a deck. It, it is good, but I don't think it's just that good, you know what I mean? It's not like this, uh, it's not like this, uh, you know, Chaos Dragon structure deck or, or Monarch structure deck that's about to turn everything on its, on its heels. No, it's, it's nothing like that. But now for the things that I want to happen on the ban list, guys. Um, just like the OCG, you guys all know that I love Monarchs, and you guys just saw Eugene, and I guess he loves Monarchs too, because he just played them in the Yugi Tuber Grand Championship, but just like the OCG, I would like to see Pantheism come back to three in the TCG, because I think that uh, Monarchs have been hit for far too long now. I think that they have deserved some redemption, you know? I think they've caused their mischief and everything and can start making a comeback. I think that it's actually a long overdue comeback, but that is also a biased opinion on my part because I like the deck. So, um, you know, so take everything I'm saying right now with a grain of salt because all these are, you know, just my personal opinions and things. I personally think that evenly matched should go to zero. Realistically, what I, and this is just a random prediction here, but I really think that they're gonna put evenly matched to one, similar, you know, to like Raigeki 
or Dark Horror or something like that, and they're going to think that it's not going to be very sacky, but then it is going to be really sacky, still like something like Skill Drain, not Skill Drain, yeah, well, I guess like Skill Drain because it is at one, but I was going to say Vanity's Emptiness, okay? I think what they're going to figure out is that that card's still really sacky and wins games on its own, like, you know, Vanity's Emptiness or Exiton or something like that, and I think that they're going to just end up banning it. Uh, in other words, guys, I think Evenly Matched is a card that will be banned in the future, but I am not sure. I am, I am not sure. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys for a fact that it's going to be banned in the future because I don't know. And now for another card that I think is going to be put on the ban list, but I, this is what I don't want to go on the ban list because the, I have a play set of this. Okay, anti-spell fragrance, okay? <laughs> like anti-spell fragrance. I have a play set of like the Game Boy ones and I've had them for a really long time. And this is one of my favorite cards that I own and I don't want to see the card go away, okay? that's the, So that's my own selfish reason for, you know, for not wanting the card to get banned or anything. But uh, being realistic, um, because anti-spell fragrance uh, floodgates pendulum so much at, at times and because, you know, decks like True Draco and other, you know, maybe future uh, powerful um, anti-meta or stun decks can take advantage of that card, I could definitely see that card being banned. Although, if, uh, if uh, you know, or, or being limited or to one or something like that, so similar to how Vanities was, you know, because I was talking about Vanities him just a minute ago, but I could see uh, anti-spell fragrance following, following suit because it is a relevant floodgate and it is a really good floodgate against pendulums enough. If uh, Konami is going to push the pendulum, um, you know, the pendulum, uh, I guess you could say play style, the pendulum uh, mechanic, that's the word. Uh, if, the, if Konami is going to push the pen pendulum mechanic and they're going to keep making pendulum support, which they have been, um, then uh, anti-spell fragrance may, may need to go. I mean, because anti-spell fragrance is a very, very old card. They've made their money on it. They've reprinted it a couple times and stuff. It may be time for it to go, but once again, I don't want it to. And that about does it for this ban list discussion, guys. I know it's kind of anticlimactic and stuff, but I really, truly think that in our current metagame, you know, with everything, you know, how, how it is currently, I should say, just with the, the game, the current game state, let's put it that way, with the current state of Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I don't feel like uh, anything really needs to happen with this ban list, you know what I mean? And I feel like um, after the structure that comes out, I think, you know, Konami's going to wait a little bit and then see what happens. Then they're going to make a couple hits and that's going to be the ban list that we're going to be rocking until Nats. I really think that this next ban list, guys, and that's why uh, this ban list is so important because this ban list very may well be the ban list that we rock until Nats. Like the, the one, you know what I mean? Unless, of course, you know, something just comes up that is absolutely broken and busted. Of course, they will, you know, get rid of that before Nats, hopefully, anyways. But um, uh, that's why this ban list discussion, uh, you know, we're just, you know, ban list discussions around this time are very important because it affects, you know, uh, Nationals, and Nationals are a big deal. That's like the culmination of this whole season, you know, is Nats, and then Worlds, you know? So, um, it's a very, very big deal, and I can't wait to see what they do on this ban list. I'm super excited for it, because, you know, ban list season, uh, you know, on YouTube is super, super fun, and it's super fun, you know, building decks and stuff after the ban list, you know, and knowing what it is, you know, knowing what cards you can play and stuff. Super, super fun. But I would love to know what you guys think is going to happen with this ban list down in the comment section, and until it comes out, let's go ahead and open up some Fan All right, and this one is from Anthony Cantos. Let's see what he has to say today. So we have some cards and the letter. Let's see what this letter says. Hi, fellow bean men and women. Dear Yugi Nono. -No. Hello, uh, fellow members of the Beans Resistance. This is your founder speaking. I am very pleased to see that you guys are fighting the good fight to remember the memories of our fallen bean brethren. I see that you have also recruited uh, the killer the killer of beans himself, Yugi Nono, -No, to not only be in the resistance, but be its leader. I'll just, I got nothing to do with any of this, guys. I'll just say, I'll just say this. Uh, this I'm impressed, but keep a close eye on him because we don't, we don't want him to stuff out our flame from the from the inside out. You have worked too hard to get to get here. You are you, to get killed off by the hater of beans himself. But anyways, I have a few questions for you <laughs> for your leader here. <laughs> I'm done, dude. I can't. I freaking can't even, man. You're crazy. Um, so, uh, question number one. Um, favorite bean? Uh, uh, jelly, green, uh, pin, uh, I guess uh, refried beans. So, I guess those are pinto beans. I guess. I don't know. Um, so, um, question number two. How long did it take to become the leader? I, I, I don't know, dude. Like, I, I just I just turned on. I just logged in the Discord. And the next thing I knew, I was, I was a bean resistance leader. So, I guess it took a second. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so question number three, uh, favorite general in the resistance? Uh, you're the only general I know with the resistance, so I guess you <laughs> don't know. What, what, what does Cyber Larva think of you being in this war? I don't know, dude. I I'm a deadbeat dad. His grandfather takes care of him. <laughs> I don't know what he thinks. I don't know. 
Uh, well, from what I've heard, uh, you've been uh, doing a good job, so I'll give you these cards as a reward for your hard work. I'll be, I'll be in touch and talk and talk later. Signed, Anthony Cantos. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. I, I felt like that that was just a total interrogation instead of a letter, <laughs> but I guess that was. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. Back on squad. Hey, and then A, B, and C. Pretty sweet, dude. Thank you so, so much, dude. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Like, you're, you're freaking incredible. Thank you so much for writing every single week. All right, guys. This one is going to be from Foghorn Scorpio. This guy uh, draws, like, some of the coolest stuff we get in fan mail, guys. I mean, I'm serious. Like, this guy, Foghorn Scorpio, man. He's, he's a complete madman. He, like, draws all over his letters. He sends some of the coolest letters I get. You guys are in for a treat. And what did he write this on? Quickly, quickly! I thought I'd experiment in the name of, in the name of letter how. <laughs> I thought I'd experiment in the name of recycling by turning this fast food wrapper into a solid letter. How are things on your turf? As much as I miss Vandal Mondays, I'm proud of your choice to incorporate the zaniness into your regular content. Let's face it, dude, your content evolves constantly. Now my letters must do the same, even though, uh, even though I ever uh, caught the real early. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episodes back in late 2005, I saw enough to understand why Zan Truesdale is considered a badass. The way you uh, tinker with cyber dragons is like a work of art. I can uh, study your decks like I would a Picasso painting. And certainly, I thanked you bef uh, before uh, in my letters, but I really uh, mean it from the b uh, bottom of my heart. Your content to help me uh, through a long period of uh, unemployment that finally ends later this month. Well, good, dude. No, I feel that, man. I feel that. I, You, you, you know, like, I've, I've been open about it. I mean, I got laid off too, guys. Like, I mean, layoffs happen. Like, me and uh, several thousand other people got laid off. Like, it happens to everybody. It's terrible. Um, so, so far, um, spring in New England has felt uh, like an extended winter, but I'm uh, hyped for the warmer days ahead. Oh, one last note. Uh, Upside Down Relinquished impresses yet perplexes me. May the Millennium items be with you. You too, dude. Sincerely, Foghorn Scorpio. And he drew me as a freaking Ojama. <laughs> Amazing, dude. I don't know how long these take you, but like seriously, like you write some of the coolest stuff I get. Thank you so much for writing this. This is definitely one of my new favorite letters I've ever gotten. <laughs> this is amazing, dude. Thank you so much for writing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, good luck. I hope that you this this job, uh, you know, this new job works out for you and stuff. And uh, and I hope that you work there for a really long time and enjoy your coworkers and and all that stuff, dude. Thank you so much for writing again. Subscribe! <laughs>